Good morning, guys. It's Saturday. Yeah, I have to work, so... <clears throat> Saturdays don't mean a whole lot to me. Uh, like, not like they used to, man. I used to love Saturdays. But now, since I work every Saturday, pretty much, it's just another work day. It's like my Friday. A little chilly this morning, and I have no clue why I give you guys the weather report when I get on here. Like, none at all. Because some of you guys might be watching this video, like, a month from now. But anyway, today's video, we're going to talk about is less more when it comes to subwoofers. Uh, man, in a lot of situations, yeah. And in some situations, no. And I guess what I mean by that is... Uh, if I was going to do a, a build with some dual 10s, well, I would much rather have 16 of them as four. I think 16 would be a lot louder than four. But you run into situations where I, I was kind of thinking about doing 12 12s in here, and it's going to be hard to fit. So... In my head and with my tape measure, I figured out how to do 815s in here. And 815s, in theory, it would be louder. But honestly, I think it's going to be louder with six. And I know what you're thinking. Man, that is just dumb. How are you going to drop cone area and get louder? I'm one of these people. I like to do research all the time. And... A lot of you guys probably watched the Sundown Unofficial channel. And remember when Derek took, uh, he went from 418s to 218s, which granted that that's a really, really uh, big ratio for burp and closure. But, you know, he, he cut his cone area in half and jumped up to the 170 marker, actually passed it. So, I mean, he gained a few dBs dropping subs, so... Some people might be like, well, that's a fluke. But then again, if you go back and uh, my buddy Chris Lee went from 2412s to 1612s and got louder. Now, I don't know all the specifics of it. I, I don't. I mean, there's something that happens in the cabin of the vehicle in front of the enclosure where the compression and everything take effect and it really starts hurting your subwoofers. I think you build up so much pressure to the point that even if you got like a door open, it really has nowhere else to go because you've filled that void and the subs aren't moving as far as they, they could because of all the pressure of all the cone. That's what I think. I am not, I am not the person to really be explaining i'm just saying what i think happens somebody else can chime in and be like this is exactly what happens but not me but i honestly think less is more because i have done so good with four of these with the size of the cabin that i have that i honestly think just adding two more is going to be that sweet spot and to do eight in here i would only be able to fit six on a baffle and I'd have to have two behind the seat, which is some people call like a 6.5 order. I'm not really keen on wanting to do that. I thought about it. It was like a thought in my head and I'm just like, no. I, I mean, I, I know people that do really good with them. Uh, John Little does really good that way, but I think I'd be louder anyway with six than eight and I can fit six on the baffle, so there's no need to, you know, behind the seat. No, no need at all. So with that being said, that's my plan is to do 615s in here. Uh, I will have to rebuild the whole enclosure to do it because when I built this, I went on the inside of the wheel wells with three layers here, three here. And believe it or not, if I just build to the right at the outside of the wheel well where my wood's here and wheel well is like right here flush... I can fit six in there easily. Uh, so I laid out a baffle. That I took a board and I marked my baffle out on it, like the measurements for my baffle that's in here. 
and I only needed to go uh, like three inches wider overall to fit all six in. So, you know, the same length from front to back, just wider. But I'm going to build considerably wider. Uh, just to give me a lot more room in there. But in that case, less is more. I've seen in other cases where less subwoofer is more. When we talked about the big inefficient subwoofers that weigh 100 pound plus. Some of them are great. Some of them aren't. Uh, you know, like the SCAR DNR, that was a terrible subwoofer. Uh, friends of mine personally are doing better and running more power to resilient sound platinums than they are the resilient teams. Uh, I think that's just another woofer that was way overhyped that didn't do really well. That's a really big, heavy subwoofer. Uh, the platinums, though, God, them things, that's a really good subwoofer, the platinums are. And it seems to me like that, seven, you know, it's like the 50 to 70 pound range for subwoofers is a really good range. Now, I know the ZV6s are heavy. I don't know how good they are yet. I got a friend that, that's got four of them, and they seem to be doing pretty good. But uh, a lot of research and development went into those, you know. I'm not saying all the really big, heavy subwoofers are bad. I'm saying some of them are. Some of them definitely are. Uh, they're just not that great, really big and efficient. Efficiency plays a big role in subwoofers, uh, which is why I really, you know, I've had the discussion on here before about the three inch versus four inch coils and you know, how it all come down to the coil type. You know, say like a, a four inch, four layer round wound coil is not gonna be any better than a three inch four layer flat wound. You know, you'd probably almost be able to put more power to the three inch flat wound four layer versus a, a four inch four layer round wound. Then if you get into the eight layer for the three inch, you're just gonna blow it away, you know, with power handling. That's a whole different subject, guys. We're just talking about, you know, sometimes less subwoofer is more and I don't know how to explain it, but I have seen uh, a lot of people drop cone area and get louder. And like Chris Lee, he's even nastier demoing now. Uh, you know, we're talking better demos, windier demos, louder, and he went from 2412s to 16. And when he dropped that, he also dropped the power because he had 12 8Ks, you know, two, two 12s per 8K. So he had 12 8K, he's down to eight 8Ks. He's still running the same power. Uh, and he just got louder. So, I don't know, if somebody can explain how this works. I know cabin, the cabin definitely has something to do with it. My Jeep has a fairly small cabin because when, it, it, I mean, it's hard to fit bigger people in here for demo. I do it, but it's hard. Uh, but it's a small cabin and I think you know, honestly, the the 615s will do a lot better than eight. Especially being able to keep them all in here versus two down behind the seats. Now, that is my overall plan. I'm, I'm already getting the equipment to do this. I got some recones on the way. Uh, I got to get two more motors and baskets for these. And like I said, I might have other woofers to test before I rip all this out. If I do get other woofers to test, then it's gonna be, I'm gonna run them for two weeks, four of them, rebuild and put, put them in, do more testing. But uh, as it stands, if nothing, if, if nothing happens with that, then I would actually like to pull the equipment out of here next weekend. Uh, I need to get on this build. I definitely wanna have this thing done by the Sundown Audio Show. And it's going to be tricky at my new place, but like I said in another video, you know, even though I don't have a carport to do the work under, uh, I have canopies, guys. Uh, that You can get a canopy at Walmart for 100 bucks, but I, I do have some canopies, so I'll throw a canopy up and work under it, you know, worst case scenario, but I know the Jeep really well, and I think I can get this thing shelled out in one weekend. 
baffle done the next weekend and maybe the weekend after that you know get the front and back so we're looking at maybe a month for the full rebuild somebody had mentioned in my video i put up yesterday about tear it out and use this roof i can't use this roof guys uh i made a big mistake when i built this enclosure because this was my first wall build and definitely the first sixth order i had ever done i stopped everything right here like my sheet of wood that went on the roof only come to, to like back here uh everything only went to here when i got this enclosure done it was just raw steel right here and the first time i turned it on this flopped so bad and i i did what any normal person would do i cut a piece of wood and glued it up here but that made a pivot point right here <laughs> where it was constantly like the box was solid here and the rip was but the whole front half does this it's still doing this with the stripper pole with the steel up here because all i could do when i put the steel in is bolt it with huge lag bolts to the top of the enclosure up here they're probably broke i don't know but i gotta go back and like cut all the steel i put in out and i'm just gonna do one sheet from like the front up here all the way back but that's why i can't really salvage any of it i'd love to but i can't um it's probably gonna destroy this roof when i take this out i'm pretty sure it will uh because like a gangster i cut all the roof braces out <laughs> which I did that in the Weiss Blazer, but I did the wood up here. And since the, the roof arches, I use that good maple in hers. It wouldn't arch with the roof. Uh, had to go back, drill hose, put spray foam in it, which works great. Her roof is solid. Um, I use cheap pine in here. So when I like wedge the two before is up to hold that wood back there, it actually bowed that cheap wood. So the roof of like my enclosure in here is actually like arch because the first piece had the arch. The second piece <coughs> I put up, you know, with like wood glue and screw. So it just kind of arched it in the third piece arch. So it's all good guys. But uh, anyway, I'm rambling. I'm parked in front of my job doing this video. I really need to get in there because Saturday is usually the busier tattoo day of the week. But uh, yeah, I... If you know the answer to the whole why is less subs more, drop a comment down here. Give your theories on it, guys. Because I said, I've seen it happen a lot where you drop cone area and just gain across the board. I don't understand it. I have my theory. I don't know everything, guys. I'm still learning like a lot of you guys are. I do know a lot of stuff. And then some stuff, man, I just get lost on. And this is one of the things. But I got my plan set, so... I'm a, I, and I am going to film, like, when I do the tear out, I'm going to film. When I do the rebuild, I'm going to film a lot of it. So, I've had people ask for that. That I do plan on doing. But, all right, guys. Peace out. Base on. Have a great weekend.